In this video, we are going to talk about the rise of chariot warfare in ancient India. So when we talk about chariot warfare, it is the Vedic period where we find that the chariots has become an important part of warfare. And in the Vedic literature, there are great number of hymns that describes chariots and their prowess in the battle. Now, what we find is that in the Vedic period, the chariots were a two wheeled vehicle. And in most cases, it was drawn by two horses. But there are instances in which we find that sometimes three or even four horses were yoked to a vehicle. Now, there are even evidence to suggest that sometimes asses were used to draw chariots. But this was not a regular practice. In most cases, it was the horses that were used to draw the chariot. Now, when we look at the chariots of the Vedic period, we find that all of the chariots of the Vedic period had a warrior who was called Savyesht or Savyeshtha. And then there was the charioteer was called Sarathi. The position of these two were fixed and we find that the warrior was always positioned on the left side of the chariot. Now he had the option to stand or to sit down and there was a seat that was provided. The charioteer or the Sarathi on the other hand was positioned on the right side of the chariot and we find that there was no seat for him to sit. He was always meant to stand and that is why sometimes in the Vedic literature Sarathi is also called Sthatra which means stationary or immovable. But this does not mean that the Sarathi or the charioteer of the Vedic period had a lower position. In most cases we find that the charioteer also had the same status as that of the warrior and in some cases we find that the Sarathi or the charioteer was the kinsman of the warrior. And that is why we see that the chariot warfare of the Vedic period was associated with the nobles or the elites of the Vedic society. And it is these elites who used to fight on the chariots. Now, when we move to the period of the epics, Mahabharata and Ramayana, we find that chariots are still the most prominent part of the warfare. And what appears to be the case that although we now have evidence to suggest that elephants were also being used in warfare, but the role of chariot is still supreme. This prominent position of chariots can be seen from the fact that when we analyze Mahabharat, we find that most of the heroes of Mahabharat or the main characters used to ride on chariots, not elephants. Now, when we talk about the chariots of the epics, we find that it is essentially the same chariot as that of the Vedic period. It still has two wheels and in most cases, two horses were used to draw the vehicle. And apart from this, we see that there are also reference to suggest that chariots of four wheels were also used. But most scholars believe that the fact that these four wheel chariots are mentioned suggests that this is a later interpolation. We can say this because when we look at the description of the chariot of Lord Krishna, we are told that the wheels of Lord Krishna's chariots resembles the moon and the sun. So this clearly suggests that this vehicle was a two-wheeled vehicle. Another important addition that we see in the epic period that happened in chariots is the introduction of two warriors. And these two warriors were called Chakra Raksha. Now Chakra Raksha is clearly meant that these soldiers were employed to protect the wheels of the chariots. Now we all know that the wheels of the chariots are its weakest part. So it was important to protect them. And we find that these Chakra Raksha were employed to protect these vehicles. And what we see is that these Chakra Raksha were junior members of the noble class. They were not ordinary soldiers. Another interesting detail about the chariots comes from Mahabharat. We are told that the chariots had jingling bells on them. And we are also told that the chariots of king and princesses had umbrella or chhatr on them. And this was symbolic of the royal status of the person 
who was riding the chariot. In Mahabharat, we also find that chariots did not travel alone. There were also supply carts that used to accompany these chariots. They, these supply carts used to carry different weapons and also food and other supplies. Now, when we move to the Mahajanpat period, we find that chariots are still being used in warfare. And most of our information concerning chariots comes from the Buddhist literature. So we have the Majjhim Nikaya that talks about a Kuru prince named Rattapal. And this Rattapal, we are told, was an expert charioteer. Then another Buddhist source tell us that there were villages of warriors who were expert charioteers. Now then there is the famous Vinaypitak. So Vinaypitak tells us that usually four warriors were employed in a chariot. So from this description, it appears that the chariots of the Mahajanpat period was not much different from the chariots that was used in the epics. And this suggests that there was little to no innovation that happened in chariot warfare from the epic period to the Mahajanpat period. Apart from the Buddhist sources, we have also the account of campaigns of Alexander. So these are mainly Western classical accounts. So we are told that in the battles against Alexander, Indian powers also employed chariots. So we have the famous example of King Porus. And we are told that the chariots of King Porus were drawn by four horses and these chariots carried six men. Of these, two were shield bearers, two were archers, one was the charioteer and one was employed to fight at close quarter. Apart from the chariots of King Porus's army, there is also reference to suggest that other Indian states also employed chariots that were drawn by four horses. So it appears that by the time Alexander came, there was a significant evolution that happened in chariot warfare. So now we find that instead of two wheel chariots, there were also four wheel chariots that were employed. But these, in my view, were not as significant as we would like it to be. Because when we look at the sculpture reference, we have the sculptures of Sanchi and Barhut. And in these sculptures, we find that it is two wheeled chariots that are mostly depicted. So this suggests that in most cases, still the two horse chariot was used. There were special circumstances from where we find that chariots that were drawn by four horses were used. Now, when we move to Kautilya's Arthashastra, Kautilya talks about six different types of chariot. And he also tells us that a chariot usually carry 10 person and sometime it can increase to 12. Now, another source that has some interesting detail about chariot warfare of this period is Megasthenes' Indica. And Megasthenes tells us that on the marches, it was not horses that were used to draw chariots. Instead, it was the job of oxen to draw chariots. Now, the reasoning for this is pretty straightforward. In order to keep your horses fresh and ready for the battle, oxen were used to draw chariots beyond the marches. So this is why we see that oxen were used. So these reference suggest that during this period, chariots are still being used in warfare. But what appears to be the case that at the start of the Mauryan period, the role of chariot had certainly diminished. And what we find is that the chariots are not as prominent as they were, let's say in the Vedic period. And what appears to be the case that now the preeminent position in warfare has been occupied by the war elephant and the cavalry. Now the reason for this decline of the chariot were many. And we will talk about these reasons in a later video. You can watch this video here when it will be uploaded. Thank you for watching.